the most frequently used political rhetoric when it comes to campaigning for state assembly elections uh, in, in India across various states these days is the concept of a double engine sarkar, which essentially means uh, one party that has formed government at the union uh, basically comes to these states and uh, you know asks people to vote for the same party at the state level as well so that they can have a policy alignment so to speak. Now, Firstly, uh, th their claim is that this achieves better growth, uh, better uh, you know alignment, uh, all the other good things, right? Firstly, is this good in theory? Secondly, is this good in practice, right? Uh, in theory, it is of course not good, right? Like because uh, uh, in, in a federal structure, there is the local government, the state government, and the union government, right? It, there isn't a hierarchy amongst these uh, governments. Each government, uh, like for instance, the local government does not answer to the state government. The state government does not answer to the union government, right? Like these these governments answer only to the people who elect them. And, and, and this absence of a hierarchy is sort of a foundational concept in the idea of liberal democracy, which has checks and balances as a foundational principle, so on and so forth, right? So given that, you know, it, it is not hierarchical, that becomes a problem in itself. Secondly, what happens is that what does the double engine sarkar mean? Does it mean that you know uh, the union government is going to make a set of decisions which are favorable to a state that elects uh, a government which is formed by the same party that has formed the union government? If that is the case, then it necessarily has to come at the expense of other states which have not voted for that particular party, right? Like because that's how. Uh, policy making works. It's a zero sum game at that level. And if, if that's the case, it becomes seriously problematic and unfair to the other states, which questions the concept of the Union of India, right? So it's just bad in theory. In practice, more importantly, because most people who vote and are looking for their next bread or next uh, sort of job or any of these things do not care for, uh, you know, the theoretical niceties or philosophical rectitude. What they care for is, is my life going to be better? Because that is the primary promise of the double engine sarkar. What it says is, you know, vote the same uh, party in power in both the state and the union. And what you will see is greater policy alignment, which will enable higher economic growth. Now, question is, is that true? Unfortunately, what the data reveals is it is not true, right? Like there is an absence of correlation between the, you know, uh, the, the sameness of the party forming government at the state level and the uh, 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 union government, right? Like uh, the data clearly reveals that if anything, the correlation runs the opposite side, right? Like uh, if, if you rank all states in the descending order of uh, uh, per capita economic growth achieved in the five year period between 2017, 18 and 2022, 23, if anything, the states that have governments which have not been formed by the uh, party that has formed the incumbent government in Delhi uh, have done slightly better. Of course, you know, we don't have data for Gujarat and Maharashtra. If they come in, it will probably be the other way, but there isn't serious correlation. And here is where you have to seriously ask the poster child of such a, uh, a, a double engine sarkar arrangement, which is Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh is a poor state, and therefore it has a low base effect. And you know, if it, and that is the state which sort of has the greatest political attention, so to speak, given its enormous size. And if there is any state where this double engine sarkar as an idea works, it should be that state. But if you look at Uttar Pradesh, despite its low base effect in the set five-year period, it has had one of the lowest absolute growths in um, you know, per capita uh, uh, net domestic product. Uh, this is a really tragic idea because you know, while rich states like Punjab and Haryana haven't grown as much either, uh, with each of those states having one having the same uh, party in power and the other not having it, so it's sort of you know, it's it's not as if you know you. You should vote the opposite party in power in order to achieve it. It is just that there is no relationship. But the point is that rich states at least can afford to not grow at a rapid pace, whereas poor states like Uttar Pradesh have no option but to grow. It is a tragedy if they don't. And in the last five-year period, that tragedy has happened. So, clear that.